going to start out using Tamiya's Panzer Gray instead of black because I want to hairspray chip it down to the Panzer Gray. Um, and it works pretty much the same. It takes quite a while to base coat bare plastic with just Tamiya paint though. It's not really the best primer. You can see I get more sloppy as I keep going. So here's me using the Tresemme hairspray, two even coats, and then we're using Tamiya's XF57 Desert Yellow as REL8000. It works pretty well. It's a pretty good match. I know there's better paints out there now, like uh, the AK Real Colors, but if you don't want to bother with that, the Tamiya Desert Yellow is pretty good. So this is me doing the hairspray chipping. It's really hard to film and I didn't get any good footage of it. It did turn out really well and you can see that later in the video. But yeah, not easy to get on film. So here I am using Wilder's transfers, dry transfers, instead of decals. I decided to only do Balkan Kreutz, you know, mainly because I only had those in dry transfer. I didn't have like specific Africa Core decals or uh, markings in dry transfers, but all I did was tape them straight and then burnish them down. There are videos if you're interested in seeing how like more professional people do this. But basically you just rub it with something. So this is a like a like a shish kebab thing kind of sanded down to a, a round point and I just go over it make sure I hit every part now it did end up that these were crooked when I was done and some people I showed pictures to told me that they're like yeah that doesn't look right so I had to actually scrape them off with the same tool and then redo them but you can it's like they actually came off pretty easy so it's not a huge deal and I do prefer these. I used them on my Hetzer uh, two years ago. And this now, and I don't want to use decals ever again. I'm sure I'll have to, but I don't want to. There's a Mosin Nagant strip down tool behind the <laughs> in this shot. But there's a good little dry fit so you can see what's kind of looking like. So now we're doing the uh, detail painting, mixed together a red-brown for the wire cutters. It's pretty close. I didn't chip that like I meant to. I cut a lot of things out on this build where there were things that I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then the thing took, you know, a year and a half, if not more. So when I would get a little bit of time, if I would do something, I'm like, that's, that's done. That's what we're going to do. Uh, but there you can see I'm actually painting that wood and that's model colors old wood. It looks exactly the same as the base coat And here you can see I'm trying to use German camo black brown But it's super gone off like it just would not cover anything and that's a, a Bottle of paint that had gotten frozen. So I did have one that wasn't so I was able to do this And this is the color I used for a lot of stuff on this build all of the metal surfaces uh, spare tracks the exhaust, tons of things I use this for. Mainly because it's one of the only paints I currently have that's functional. There you can see those 3D printed clamps, they look pretty sweet. And some more detail painting. Uh, painting the spare tracks was a huge pain on the front plate. If you can leave them off, I suggest you do so. That's if you're building this kit, of course. And here we're doing the dot filter. 
Some of my paint consistency was a little wacky here, you can see. But really, as long as you get the paint on, you can kind of fix it when you're blending. Now, I was a little concerned with this stop filter because I think I changed the hue enough that it looks like Dunkelgalb and not Ariel 8000. I tried to knock it back darker with the wash later, and I'm still pretty happy with it, but it wasn't perfect. Here I'm just dusting the previously black painted tracks with a dark brown that I had of some kind of Tamiya's on the shelf. I hadn't done kind of the misting thing that I've seen lots of people do on YouTube, but I did it here. So this wash, if you look right now, uh, that was me trying to mix my own oil wash and didn't really work. And then that right there is Wilder's Deep Shadow Wash straight out of the jar, which worked super well. Like I was shocked how well it worked because I, in the past, never used uh, like a wash product, like just as, you know, as they sell it. And this worked really, really well. It's got the good consistency where it's like thick enough. I like these to be kind of hard to remove. I want to kind of fight with it. cleaning it up. Uh, it takes a really long time to clean a vehicle with this many rivets and things. Now we're doing the wheels. Again, lots of bolts and details. I was pretty worried about matching the look of the suspension with the hull because I did them on different days. I didn't want to overdo the wheels or underdo it. And now I'm painting the bare metal surfaces on the contact part of the tracks. This is Tamiya's chrome silver because I had it laying around. All of my other chrome paints had died. I had like all of the Vallejo, what are they, like metal colors or something and they're all worthless. So here I'm doing the pigments and the tracks. Now this is Wilder's Desert Sand, and I instantly hated it. I thought it looked terrible. Um, it looks like DS tracks, it looks peach and ridiculous, and it just looked horrible. And I was, it was just one of those moments where you're like, oh no, I ruined it. So I decided I just wanted the tracks to look like tracks because this, this build was starting to really get to me. So jump forward now, and I have done testing off camera, to make that side look like I want it to. So I'll now recreate that with the side I hadn't done on camera so you can see what I did. So while there's desert sand again, you know, maybe I could have blended it by putting a lot of that desert sand on the vehicle, but I just didn't like the way it looked. So I added industrial dust to it, which is more of a gray desaturated dust color which maybe I could have just left it like that. It looks much better. But then I added some European earth because I just like to have browns in my tracks. Even if it's a desert vehicle, it'll be sitting on a shelf, not a dio. And it just, the tracks really looked weird. So I went with something more generic, but that's what I wanted it to look like. So it works for me. Now more detail painting, doing the muffler, again with German Camo Black Brown, because I had it. And then the machine gun. And then I'm masking off the bottom of the hull so I can do some traditional pigment work on the exhaust. I know that's kind of falling out of favor, but I had pigments, so. And I really liked what it looked like until I used the 
um, thinner to set it. You can kind of see when I start to put thinner on here in a second that it, it sort of just kind of blends it all together. And it looks not that brown anymore, but it looks more like that than I wish it did. So here's some detail shots. That's all the footage I have. Um, thanks for being patient. Thanks for still being out there. Uh, thanks to my patrons because I bought this kit with the Patreon money. Um, yeah, it's good. I cut some corners. It took unbelievably long amount of time, but I had another kid during this build. My son Oliver is now nine months old. My son Arthur is two. I don't really have free time or personal space or any of that stuff. And if you notice the smudge on the left side of the screen in these shots, it's because my two-year-old likes to grab my camera and pretend he's filming or actually film. It's pretty ridiculous. But I do appreciate everybody still commenting on videos and I still answer lots of tiger questions all the time. I am still working on things, lots of 3D printing stuff and more videos planned. It's just really difficult. So, you know. I'll see you guys as soon as I can. Thanks a lot.